Now that we understand the basics of what a state tree is and how all of these things work, uh, we're going to go through and actually talk about how to make them useful. Because in the last video, uh, all that we managed to uh, end up with is saying hello at the 000 position of the world. And, well, while that is fun, it's not actually that useful. So let's talk about making some tasks. Now, if we open up our state tree that we made, uh, we already added a task, the debug text task, which seems to be a, a little iffy with the way it works, because this offset is supposed to be an offset from the character uh, that it's running on. Uh, but that doesn't seem to be working, because it's just the world position for some reason. But that doesn't really matter for what we're doing right now, because we can just uh, remove this, because we're going to be making our own tasks. Now, I should point out that if you're using a state tree AI schema, uh, you have one more default task uh, available to you because we have AI actions move to. This requires an AI controller to work, of course, because it just uses the move to function uh, from the AI controller wrapped up in a nice little task. We can replicate that effectively so that we can use it on a uh, non-AI version of the schema instead. And the reason that we would do that is because we want to put the state trees on the character classes themselves instead of on the AI controllers because we want to be able to set things on a more like individual basis or it just makes a lot more sense personally to me to be able to do that. So let's get started with a handful of things. We need a move to task and then we need something that will figure out what location we'll move to. And we're going to make those two separate tasks. Uh, you might want to make that one singular task in practice, but I want to show you a couple of things of sharing data between different tasks as well. So we're going to make that into two separate tasks uh, for mostly educational purposes. So let's get started by making our AI move to task. You can just do that by going to your blueprint, typing in task under all classes and finding the state tree task blueprint base. I personally uh, mark this with STT for state tree task move to non-AI. In here, we have a couple of things that we can override. The enter state, so this runs whenever the state that this task is on is entered. The exit state, this runs whenever we exit the state that we were on. State completed, which does a similar thing. It runs whenever the state we're on is completed. Uh, this has a little bit more intelligent logic uh, to it, where it does it in the proper hierarchy. Uh, exit state is, I believe, not so consistent in the order that it does things, because state completed is called right after the state has been completed, as it says here as well. But for most use cases, uh, these two are effectively interchangeable. And then we have tick, which will just run every frame as long as the state that this task is on. Uh, is active. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to enter state. So whenever we enter the state, we want to move to a location. So for that, we'll first need a location to move to. So move to location, which will be a vector and we'll expose that. Now, we also want to get the actor that we're uh, running this on because we don't have like default access to that. So we'll make a variable called actor which will be of type actor, and we'll expose that as well. We're going to make this more intelligent and a little bit automated in a moment, but I want to show you the basic setup first. So we'll get the actor, and we'll actually uh, get the AI controller off of it to check whether or not it has an AI controller. Because even though we're running this on a non-AI controller tree, uh, we're going to be using an AI controller function, so it needs to have an AI controller to work. So we're going to get AI controller and we're going to check if that is valid. Because if this AI controller is not valid, we want to just immediately uh, finish the task and mark it as unsuccessful. We'll talk a little bit more about finish task in a moment because this is poorly named. This should be finish state. If you have multiple tasks on something, it's not going to do those tasks one after the other necessarily. It's going to run them pretty much all at the same time. And whenever any one of them gets to a finished task, it finishes the entire state. Anyway, if the AI controller is found, we can do move to location or actor. The reason that we're doing this one is because this one is latent. Uh, so it has these pins for on request failed or on move finished, which is uh, quite important. If we just use the normal move to location, 
Uh, this will just start the move, but it won't give us any feedback as to when the move is finished. And that's going to be important for what we want to do here. So we can give in either a goal uh, actor or a goal destination. We're just going to go for a goal destination at the moment. Uh, you can make this also take in an actor. I believe the actor uh, input takes priority over the location. So if you put in both, it's going to go for the actor. Uh, but that's not really like too relevant right now. We just want to have the move to location. And then when either the request uh, fails or when the move is finished, uh, we'll again finish task. On request failed, we'll see uh, this as being not successful. And when the move is finished, we'll say that this is successful. This can influence the different types of transitions that we go into. Based on, hey, did we reach our goal or not? We might want to go into a different state entirely. But this effectively is our first task. So we more or less just recreated the AI move to task uh, on something that now can exist on the actor itself instead of having to be run specifically on the AI controller, which is just kind of nice, if you ask me. So going back into the state tree, we can see uh, we have this thing over here. Let's, uh, let's call this uh, patrol. And we add the task there. The task that we'll add is our stt move to non ai and here we can see we have a field for the actor that's going to be the actor that will be doing the moving and then we have the move to location both of these we're going to need to populate in some way or another the actor field is actually very easy to populate because state trees has a built-in way to supply this context variable into any task that we're running on it that's simply going into our blueprint here for the task and going into the category and typing the word context it's not case sensitive it can be lowercase uh, if you wanted to uh, but do make sure that there's no typos and then when we compile this and go back you'll see that hey it's now immediately uh, populated with a binding to this context variable and it even does that when you have like a different name i just changed it to like fdsfs some gibberish it just does it based on the type. So if you have multiple things that are actor references, only one of them should be the context because otherwise they're all going to be filled in uh, with the actor context here. But we'll just call this actor because it's descriptive. Now, we have this move to location and we can just manually say, hey, I want you to move to like 100, 500, 200 or something like that. And that will manually make it move that direction uh, to that location. Of course, uh, that's not what we want to do. We want to be able to uh, do this dynamically. It should pick a location to move to and then move to that location. So you can just do that in uh, in here, of course. You can just calculate where you want to move to based on the current location and then like find uh, a different location. And that is a fine way to do it. And that's probably the way to do it. But I want to show you how to set up a different task and access information from that task to populate the move to location variable. So let's make a find location task. So we'll make a new blueprint task and we'll call this stt find location. And he will just make a variable uh, which we'll call location and we'll set this up as a vector and we'll make a variable that we'll call radius and we'll set that up as a float. Then on state enter, we also actually need the actor again so let's make an actor reference and just like we did before we can set this to being uh, context and the wonderful thing actually is that if you set this up to be uh, context you don't even need to like expose it technically it'll just do that for you but let's just expose everything anyway so we get that actor's location and we get a random reachable point in radius so the origin position will be the actor's location the radius will be the radius and then the location that we get out of that will be the value of our location variable here. And that's kind of everything there is to it. So we can now add that as a task here as well. So we can uh, add that stt uh, find location. I want to pull this up to above there. And now we can start populating these things. So this radius we made a parameter for. So we can bind that to that parameter with this icon over here. If you press that, you can get any value that exists on the actor that we have. And the nice thing about that is because we have this drop down here for the uh, context actor class, we can actually set that to our uh, state tree character that we have made. And if we have any variables on there, we can actually sample from that as well. So let's make one just as an example. 
let's make a uh, like test var float or something like that. We'll make that a float so that it's actually like the right type. And if we now go to radius, we can on our actor find the test var float because we have set this up to use the context actor class of our state tree character. If we just go back to being a normal actor, we'll see that that actually is no longer available because it doesn't know what type of actor. So it's kind of like a built-in uh, casting method. For our users, of course, we don't really need that variable to be accessible, so keeping this as generic as possible is a good thing, so that we can reuse this on other characters as well. We instead just want to bind to the parameter for walking distance. Now, this location we don't need to bind anything to, because this is going to be a thing that we set. Uh, instead, what we want to do is we want to get our move to location on our move to non-AI, and we can then bind that to a value on a different task on this state, or any of its parent states. So if we put the uh, location finding thing on the root here, I can actually show you that, find location, we will be able to see that in the move to non-AI, if we want to bind something, we can get either one of these. At this point, I'm not sure which one is which though, so I'm going to delete this one again, because uh, we're going to just do it on the same state. Or you can individually like bind the X, Y, and Z to floats and all that kind of stuff, uh, as you can pretty much anywhere uh, with any vector. So let's bind this. And now this is going to, when we move to location, going to look at whatever value exists on this task, which ideally uh, we'll have run before and have picked a location. But this is a little messy still because we still have these fields that we can manually fill in and it's kind of weird. And what if we forget to put in the radius? Well, context isn't the only category that we can use uh, to make our lives a little bit easier. If we go back into uh, any of our tasks, we can set this location, which we are setting, to be an output value. And we'll get rid of all of the input fields. So it's only a value that we're setting through code and we can then bind to. So we simply do that by going into the category and typing output. Again, make sure that you don't have any typos in it. And if we do that, we can see our location is now set as an output property. We will set that value and then other things can bind to that value, which is quite nice. And that should even work dynamically. So if we're setting uh, this in event tick uh, based on like a bunch of calculation, a bunch of other data or whatever, uh, once we update this, anything bound to it, will also then reflect that with its like new updated value because that is what a binding does. It's constantly checking that value. As for the radius here, uh, we can set that up to be an input. And all that an input is, is that will, in the category, of course, that will just force you to bind it to something. It gets rid of the input field, so you can't manually put in a value anymore, but you have to bind it to something. If I remove this binding and I try to compile this now, it's going to scream at me that this input doesn't have a binding. So this prevents you from accidentally uh, making something that will break your entire state tree. So this move to location on the STT move to non-AI, which is this one, probably also should be set to being an input value because we always need to have something to walk to. And with this setup, we should now have something that pretty much just picks a location and moves to that location. So let's test that out. If we run this, uh, we don't have a nav mesh yet, so it's not going to do anything. So let's do a nav mesh bounce volume. I will make that as big as it needs to be. Press P to check the nav mesh that's been generated. That's pretty good. And now we will see that he's just moving all over the place because he's not waiting, he's not resting, he's, he's not doing anything. <laughs> he's just moving to a place, picking a new position, moving to that place, picking a new position, and just keeping that up. He also doesn't seem to uh, be playing animations, but that's not the biggest issue right now. But our uh, two tasks that we made are working together. This one is sampling from this one, and then when it finishes, it marks this state as completed, which uh, by default then goes into the transition that we have set up for it, which is no transitions that we have set up yet because that's going to be a video in and of to itself. Uh, so the default transition is just going back to root, which means that it's doing uh, just this as a loop right now.
Now, I will say, you might think, okay, so then I can put a delay in here for like uh, one second or like even like five seconds, Let's make it 10 seconds. Uh, and then after it reaches this point, it's going to do this delay task and wait for 10 seconds, right? That's how that works, right? Well, no. Because as I said, when any of the tasks on a state finish, that counts as the state being finished. So when it moves to a location and it reaches that location, it marks the state as being finished and then does the transition. So what happens here is it either finishes on move or after 10 seconds. Whichever one of these tasks marks itself as being finished first will just trigger the entire state to be finished. So if I set this to 0 0.1, you will see that he gets uh, very uh, weird because he's finishing the state every 0 0.1 seconds and getting a new position to move to every 0 0.1 seconds. And even if we delete this and I give this thing a um, child state, which we can now start playing around with, and we call this wait, and I put in a task for it to delay and say that's 0 0.1, it will do the same thing. So because this state is active, its parent state is also active, so it's still going to be doing the moving thing, but whenever this state finishes, it's going to go back to root and restart the entire thing. So this will still behave the exact same way. Even though we're technically like in the wait task, the wait task is part of the state that does the movement, so it's still going to be doing the movement as well. And if I set this again to 10 seconds, uh, it's not going to wait for like this to be finished because this is going to finish sooner and that's going to get you back to here as well i think as you can see whenever it finishes moving it doesn't wait a full 10 seconds it just does the thing now that's a little bit confusing because it doesn't actually show the transition here anymore uh, but it still does that when something doesn't have a transition it's just it goes back to roots upon finishing of any of the tasks in the state which is also why this find location task that we made doesn't finish anything because it doesn't need to it shouldn't as a matter of fact this just needs to set the thing and then be ready for anything else to grab that value it doesn't need to tell anything that it's finished because if it did that we would never be moving i can actually just show you that by adding here the finished task and now it uh it finishes every frame which uh it's a little wacky, isn't it? The whole finish task thing, again, is a little counterintuitive, but this is how, like, hierarchically that works. And that's the basic rundown of tasks, inputs, outputs, context variables, and all that kind of good stuff. So combining this with what we're going to be talking about next, which will be transitions and enter conditions, then we can start making some really, really interesting stuff. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, and my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku.